Hey everybody, Edo here, and this is Clank Catacombs. I'm excited to be talking about this because I have been pretty late to the Clank party generally. My review of the original game, Clank, was years behind. I, I didn't play Clank Space, Clank in Space, and then I did play and review Clank Legacy again years behind, and then it was the, the top game of 2020. Too, uh, for me. And so when Clank Catacombs went, uh, you know, was announced or whatever, um, which was uh, end of last year, I was like, we're going to order it. We ordered it. And it was uh, the big, one of the big games we played over the holiday a whole bunch of times and really enjoyed it. So excited to be somewhat current with my Clank Catacombs review. Um, okay. If you are not familiar with Clank at all, uh, certainly, you could start with Clank Catacomb Catacombs. These are totally standalone games. You don't need the other versions. And that's not an expansion. Um, there are some things in here that um, are actually. I think they've a lot of rules. Rules are like cleaned up and streamlined. But it wouldn't be the worst to start with Clank and play that first, and then jump into Catacombs. However, if you if you don't have any and you just want to jump into latest, there's nothing. The rules are nicely written. You'll figure out how to play. No problem. Um, but I think some of the neatness of the new things get added on that base experience. Sort of like playing Clank Legacy was cool having played Clank. Um, but, you know, you can borrow it, go to a library, whatever, try it out. Um, but if you want to drive it, jump right into Clank. You can. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about it as if, you, if you've never played before, but then I'll mention some of the differences for people who have. Okay, so, like, what's Clank? Well, so in Clank, what you're doing, you're adventurers, and you're moving through um, these catacombs, and you are racing. You want to be the first... Play, you want to win, you want to have the most points at the end of the game, but there's this race element because you're you're moving through the catacombs and you're going to be revealing this. I'll talk about how that works. But you're looking for artifacts, and artifacts are these hexagon pieces worth victory points. Different artifacts are worth different amount of victory points. There's a little bit of an interesting system, but they become more valuable the later they show up, typically. And um, you're looking to get that. However, it's not just getting the, the artifact. You can't get any points in this game unless you have an artifact, so it's mandatory. But once you get it, you then are racing to get back home. The first player who gets back home will um, get an, uh, uh, get, not the first player, well, any player who gets back home gets a bonus 20 points, but also when one player has gotten back home or multiple players got have back at home, they are going to be creating additional risks to the players still in a catacomb. So sort of like get a lot of points, get the artifact, and then like try to find that moment where you feel like you have really high value and there's a lot of threat to the other players for them to get back quickly and, and are suddenly caught off guard or, you know, maybe they saw it coming. In this game, you have hit points, and as you lose them, uh, you get closer to dying, and if you die, you're out of the game. And um, if you have that artifact, if you don't have an artifact, you're not going to get any points. And if you're not near, and I'll talk about it, but near the home base at that point when you die, you could also get, you also get your zero points. So you, if you're near home, you get your points, but you don't get the victory, the 20 bonus. But if you're in home, you get the 20 bonus. Okay, well, how am I getting hurt? Now, I, I'm going to talk about the deck building and all those elements, but in terms of how I'm getting hurt, um, you have hit points. And um, what's going to be happening is as you play, you are going to be generating the namesake, which is Clank. Clank is you take cubes and you put it in this area over here. Well, there's also this bag, and this is the dragon bag. And triggered, sometimes, not every turn, but often triggered, especially as the game goes on, when this gets triggered, a player reaches in and based on where the dragon is, they're going to pull out cubes. So now it starts with a bunch of dud cubes, black cubes, oh, I put some in here, but black cubes, the black cubes don't hurt anybody. They're just like, yay, a black cube, whatever. But what's going to happen is, as you make noise in the dungeon, you build up clank, that gets filled into the space. When it becomes time to have the dragon pull, you take all the shown clank, you put it in here, we're going to shake it up, and then I'm drawing based on where the dragon is, three cubes, four cubes, five cubes, and then when I do that, that's damage. So in this case, this stunk. I mean, I sort of just put these in here, but I just pulled out three red for one player. So that's a pretty big swing. That was a chance. Um, there's yellow in here. The more players, the more options. There's the black cubes. You could pull out two black and a red. So there is a lot of risk uh, in, in what's going on here, but a lot of unknown. So again, Oh, and if somebody ends on their turn, if they're out of the game, they've gotten to the end, they automatically pull four out in a three or four player game or six out in a two player game. So like the way you hurt the other player by ending is on your turn now, you're just gonna keep pulling out damage. 
Um, and like there's a special rule of the dead, the bag becomes totally empty um, while somebody's out of the catacombs, they just die. Um, okay, so that's sort of the flow, uh, you know, the, the premise. The other, the mechanical part of this, other than moving around or whatever, is that this is a deck builder. And a deck builder is a game where we're all going to start, not they don't all work the same way, but basically we're all going to start with the exact same 10 cards. And these cards are from like okay to bad. Um, and so some cards give you skill points, which are what you're going to buy things with. The Burgle gives you some skill points. You could have a sidestep, which is a movement. You're just going to use your movement icon to move. Um, and then there's uh, a, a scramble, which is a movement and a, a skill point. That's great. Or you just have stumble. In stumble, you stumble and you just get a negative, you get a clank, you add a clank. And so um, everyone's going to start with the same 10 cards. And on your turn, you're going to draw five of those cards. Super cool about Clank. It's a combo-licious game where you can then play your cards in any order you want. Move, spend, spend the move, move, spend, attack. There's a, a, another icon for a sword that's an attack um, to your advantage, which is really a, where a lot of the fun comes out of this game. But, you know, these, these starting cards aren't great, and we all sort of started the same. That's where the market essentially comes into place, not the market, the, the adventure row and, and things like that. So, as you get skill points, you can spend skill points to acquire cards. So there are these cards at the top, however you have it set up. These are like big stacks, they're always here. You can, like they can technically run out, but they're certainly not gonna run out until very far into the game. Um, and these are bought with skill points, and like mercenary is one skill point and two, and two attack. Explorer is two movement and uh, two, two skill and one movement. Tome is just victory points at the end of the game. And there's a goblin who you can always kill, Two attack to kill instead of skill points, attack points, and you get a gold. Gold you use in a marketplace, that kind of thing. And it's worth victory points at the end of the game. So you can take from here, and these sort of just are big stacks and you're buying it. And in a deck builder, I have my hand. I have, oh, in this one I have three burgles, so I've got three points. I'm going to buy an explorer. It's going to go here. These are all discarded, and then I'm going to draw again. So I don't see this card immediately. It comes to my hand as I shuffle and, my, and we progress. So, like, by definition... The first two hands, everyone is going to play some combination of those 10 cards. But then the third and fourth hand, after you shuffled it up, has the potential of having some of your acquired cards in. And as you play that, you have more and more acquired cards. You can get cards that let you get rid of cards and trash them or discard them. So you can start getting rid of your stumbles and stuff like that or your burgles. And that's how you improve your deck and go in different directions. The other place you can get stuff from is the adventure row. This is where the unique cards are, the cool cards are, all that stuff. Um, and when you get them, they, uh, they just are, tend to be better. They tend to cost more. Um, and you do the same thing where you put them in your hand. Some have a, this guy, when you get him, he's one skill, one attack, one, one, uh, movement, but then also on acquire, you get a free attack and a free movement. So that's cool. That you do get as soon as it happens. Um, other cards have negative uh, effects when you acquire them and adding clank and that sort of thing. So some of them, like, some of them are card draw. Some of them are heavy attack. Some of them are, you know, like, you can go in real, like, healing. You can go in really different directions from your deck building perspective. Um, also here are cards that you can attack if you have enough swords. And they give you all sorts of cool bonuses. What happens is after you acquire a card from the adventure roll, or two cards, or however many in your turn that you can afford, you then reveal and flip one and add it. If it's a normal card, that's great, whatever, but if it has a dragon in the corner, that's what's gonna trigger drawing from the back. And so, um, basically, as you play, the more people are killing or buying from the adventure row to get power and get cool cards, the more risk, the more that um, the dragon can come out and start hurting people. Um, and, you know, people don't wanna not buy things, so it, it moves and flies through. Anytime people get artifacts, they um, um, the dragon moves up and you start having more threat as it gets taken out. Everything I just described to you, everything, is could be universal to Clank. I just taught you Clank. There are some refinements where like how the end game works it was like a little different in the beginning and it looks like they've taken more of the Clank like this. There have been some shifts in that, but that basic premise of play, identical. So what's new to Clank? What's unique between this and the original title? That's where these tiles come in. The original game was a giant board. You could see the whole thing. You're gonna pick your way, you're gonna go. There are some hidden things and flipped over things, but you're basically like, everyone's planning their a route and just going. That's not the case here. 
the way this works is we start moving, we do all those things, and there's like tiles. There's the tile that once you move into, you can't move out until your next turn, and other things are going on. But there are these paths at the bottom of a region, and when you get to a place where you can then, um, I get, a nice cave is like a forest in the original, where if you go into it, you can't move again until your next turn. But on my next turn, I uh, start with, there are these six, okay, there are six uh, pink sort of doorway catacomb tiles. At the start of the game, you're gonna shuffle and remove two. And then when you get to the edge of one of these regions, you say, I want to use a path. You then flip the top one, you draw the top one. And that as a player, you can orient it however is effective to you. Like, oh, I want to go to the market, which is that, or I want to get a coin or, or, or whatever. You put it down and then you move into that space um, like that. So you're extending the board as you play. I extend, you extend, it's 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 gonna grow in its own way based on how we're extending. There's no limit. You can, if you have a ton of movements, you can be going tile, but you could just put a ton of tiles into play, all that kind of stuff. Um, there are, uh, these four cards represent your safe zone. So in the original games, there's a line on the fixed board where if you go under it, you're in the like, the, down, the, the, the danger zone, and if you get back up above the line on the board, you're safe. The way this game works is there are these four pink tiles, which in addition to this starting one, and if you were to get knocked out, have an artifact but get knocked out on these tiles, you keep all your points. The only thing you don't get is the bonus 20. Once we use these up, then we get to these darker tiles, these have the artifacts, they have all sorts of cool stuff and teleporting and all prisoners and all that stuff. Um, but these are dangerous and if you die in these, you don't get any points. So these are the deeper catacombs. But you're just gonna be extending, you're not gonna get through all the tiles. I mean, technically I sure could, but not likely you, you know, I don't know, it depends on the number of players. I mean, you could get through all of them. Like it just, in a four player game, you, you're more likely, but like you don't feel this isn't a problem and, and they're varied and they're different and you're flipping them. Um, so we're going to build out the board. Some of these have those artifacts on them. You put it in, there's a mechanic around the artifact, but basically they've made it so that as you get deeper, the likelihood of you getting a higher value artifact goes up, but it's not exact. Um, <clears throat> and then you, 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 you head back when you come in. So this idea of this revealing board is like totally unique to Clank, uh, Catacombs and the Clank family. They have like some nice mechanics where different cards come out and you know, you, you sometimes have to rotate board. You can like ro kill things that make tiles rotate and stuff like that, um, which is like very dynamic and I like a lot. Um, and then otherwise, just like Clank, there's a market where if you go to a market tile, you can spend gold to buy victory points or healing or a backpack, which would hold two artifacts, that kind of thing. The other unique feature, uh, sort of two little elements that are unique here, are there's a lockpicks. Lockpicks is a new currency to Clank like a catacombs. And um, what these do is there are paths that have locks on them. And if a path has a lock on it, you can't go through it without playing a lockpick. In addition, there are places or rooms that have three types of lockpick things. One is a library that lets you get a tomb if you use a lockpick and once you do it, no one else can. There's one that lets you get a, a major secret, which is like a big bonus that you, you can trigger. Um, like it's a little token that you flip over and say, oh, I got $5 or oh, I got healed. Um, and then the last is new, which are prisoners. These um, are, you, you, get, you get a couple, you get two of them and then some are worth victory points, some give you a little bonus, some give you points for more, they're all unique. Some add threat to the move the dragon up, cool stuff, generally you want them. Um, and then there are cards that like give you lock picks. There are ways to some things that say if you have a prisoner that kind of thing um, Those are really the magic fruit become these monkey idols and and that kind of thing But those are the the, the prisoners and the lock pick the big things. Oh, the other thing is There were always a there, there. Sorry. There are always cards that you added to your deck that were just normal cards, and there are always these enemies you're gonna kill using your, your attack, but this game also added devices which is something you buy but unlike a card that's cycling through your deck, when a device comes out, you get to choose, like once you draw it into your hand and play it, you can just play it and leave it on the table, or you get to use it. If you, it's like a one-time use thing in your deck. So once you use it, you get the value, whatever it is, and then you discard it. So, you know, it's an interesting new variant on that. Um, again, I talked at the beginning about which you would do first, um, but for me, I, this, this is, my favorite of all the ones that I've played in terms of just picking it up and playing it 
for, you know, vanilla. You can, like, with the Clank Legacy, after you've played the game through and through, you, you can, like, play it just the way, like, a rule set to play it as it is. And there's some interesting dynamics, but for me, I really like the emerging board in this and how that contributes to play. In particular, particular, I think this is a far superior two-player game. I think the dynamics of the unknown board and the revealing just makes, like, two players inherently head-to-head. It's, of course, but like it's, this is like a very, like you're going to build your own decks, but you're like really watching them and trying to come back on time. And it's very like, I'm, I'm going to win before you do and make you feel hurt uh, type of vibe. And the rotating tiles and revealing tiles add some variability where, you know, it's a little luck, not luck, but like a dynamic unknowns that can be in your favor, which can, I guess, swing to the winner, but also give somebody who's feeling behind an opportunity to catch up. Um, I think it works. Um, you know, it's great. Clank is great. Clank does a really good job. This demonstrates it can continue to do interesting and new things with it. You know, it's January. I mean, I, I, this game is definitely a top game for me, and I think it will be for the end of the year. I think, if anything, though, it'll probably be like, hey, you know, it's still Clank. You know, you're not getting out of Clank. And do I, you know, is it still, you know, memorable by the end of the year? We'll see. Uh, but easily recommended. Really enjoy it. If you like Clank and you're looking for something new and interesting with Clank, you should check it out. I don't know how players can Clank Space because I didn't play Clank Space. Um, but I think it's really well done. And I really, I just, I like, um, it's smart deck building, interesting dynamics, and the, the pressure of the dragon and the artifact. That whole vibe just works why it's been a hit game, um, and this one's no different. So that is Clank Catacombs. Hey everybody, Edo here, and thanks for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff, but most importantly, play some great games. Thanks. Bye.